Okay, so next up, as per the lab instructions, I'm now gonna download a raster data set. And I do have some background experience working with disaster management. And as we looked at earlier in these videos, I'm gonna use this Hurricane Dorian imagery website. Now, this is where it's a little tricky because if you're gonna download data from here, be ready for it. There's a lot of data in a, in a particular um, package of, of images that you get from this. And so to try to alleviate that a little bit, let's say I'm interested in this particular area right around here. And these are some good examples of, of building damage assessment. You can even see just by looking from this web page, there's blue tarps that people put on roofs that have blown down. There's trees that have been damaged. Some of these buildings are still completely damaged. Now, if I click with this particular website, you can see I have a lot of imagery from a lot of different days. So what I would recommend if you're with this one in particular, what you can do is just start unchecking these. Oh, and you can see there on September 18th, the map goes blank. I turn it back on. So I know that I'm interested in downloading the September 18th data set because if this is what I'm interested in looking at, for now, I don't need all the other ones. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and download September 18th TIFF, and there's two parts to it. And I don't know which specific tile I'm going to need, but I'll show you how to figure that out in just a moment. And so these are the really big data sets. So I won't make you, of course, sit and watch me download um, huge amounts of, of files, but I will download them and then I'll show you how to work with them. Notice that they're tar files. Okay, so I finished downloading the two parts of the September 18th imagery for the area that I'm interested in. And you can see they're pretty big files, six gigabytes and about five gigabytes, and they're tar files. If you're not familiar with a tar file, my understanding is it's an old uh, Unix uh, compression format. And fortunately, 7-zip takes care of it no problem. So what you would do is go to the file, right click, 7-zip, and just extract it right out to its own folder. And because it's such a huge amount of data, it takes a few, eh, about a minute, even on my system. So there's the first one. If I look at that first one I've extracted, I've got lots and lots of TIFF images. And if I, in a window system, if I do a view details, you know, each of them are pretty good sized files ranging from anywhere from about a hundred and well, 160 to 25 megabytes and so forth. So I'll do the same process now on the other one. So there was an A and a B if you look closely at their file names. And again, same thing, 7-zip, just extract it to its own folder. And I won't make you watch all this. Okay, and so again, another folder gets created. Now take a look as well, in both of these folders, you have a shape file and the tile index. And this is gonna be really helpful and we're gonna use it in just a moment to figure out which of these specifically are the one that I'm interested in for my study area. So again, if in my study area, I'm interested in this area right around here, I only want the tile that is for that part of the overall study area. And I've got basically more data than I need for now but I'm gonna use my ArcGIS Pro tools to figure out where specifically that part of the tile images are. So now let me show you a little trick you can use to find where exactly the image is that you're going to want for your study area. If I go back over to this website, notice in the URL, they actually have the latitude and longitude coordinate as decimal degrees. So I'm gonna copy that, go back to ArcGIS Pro, and then go under the map tab 
select the locate button and then do a search. And then I'm going to paste the corded in. Now I've got to do a little fixing of it. I want to take out that slash. And then put a space. And then if I do a search. You can see that my map was already in the roughly in the right area. Change my base map to be imagery. And you can see once it's done drawing, the imagery is, I mean, it's okay. Um, but what's really interesting is you see the outlines of the buildings. And you kind of can see sort of what it looked like before the disaster. Now, that's got me in the ballpark. So what I'm going to do now is go to catalog. And you remember I mentioned about those tile indexes. This is where these come into play. Um, so right here, tile index. I'm going to drag this one first in. And I got lucky. I, I brought the B as in Brian one in. And you can see now there's this big blue polygon that's now on top of my area. And so that means you can see this line here. This, whatever this my image I'm interested in. So what I'm going to do is just use my identify tool. Click on that polygon. See how it flashes. And this is telling me now the name of the, the TIFF file that's in that area. And I'll zoom it in so you can see it. It's basically the way they do these things often is they use the a coordinate in the, in the sort of a coordinate that's the either the top left or bottom right of the actual image. And so let me go now hunt around for this one. In fact, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use Notepad just to jot it down. So in this case, it is And just double check that I have that correct. Yep, looks good. Now, of course, there's probably other ways I could do this. I could I could have labels show up to help remind me, or if you've got a better way to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do though, again for performance, is just turn that off, and I'm going to go look in the, in the B as in Brian or B as in boy set of images and use that file name to find it. And it looks like this is the one I want. So I'm going to drag that one over. And if this all works out the way I want it to, I should see a new image now appear in my study area. And I'll go ahead and build the pyramids for performance. And you can see now I've got this beautiful, I mean, for lack of a better word, because this is a disaster, but this really compelling image of the disaster impact that I downloaded and have imported. I used the tile to kind of find where it was inside of this massive collection. So think about if you were doing a more thorough analysis of, of this disaster, the, the end, 
uh, the NOAA, sorry, NOAA that provided these data sets, uh, this imagery is amazing. And, you know, you could compare it even with the, uh, the imagery you get behind. It's just more clear. You can clearly see the damage and so forth. And so we've completed the step of finding and importing a raster data set. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.